But uh, let's move on to our next story and our big interview of the morning. The UK is to sign a deal today with the EU's border agency, which it hopes will end small boat crossings. And uh, I'm delighted to say the Home Secretary joins me, uh, James Cleverly. Good morning to you, Home Secretary. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. So, so let's talk about this um, new, new deal that you're signing. Um, what, what, what cost does it come at to, to work together with the EU on this? Well, this is all benefit. This is part of a negotiation that we've had with the uh, European Union. I'll be meeting with Commissioner uh, Johansson. And uh, this is about enhancing the cooperation, enhancing the intelligence sharing, to make sure that uh, we are maximising the work with our European partners. We've already got a very strong working relationship bilaterally with France. This is about helping put more pressure on the people smugglers back through their supply chains. And actually, just earlier this week, uh, we saw in Germany the seizure of engines that were destined to help smuggle people across the channel. So our cooperation with Europe is incredibly important. I'm very, very pleased that we are building on what is already a strong relationship with the agreement that we're signing today. You know, the question that I think everyone has on their lips when it's a deal with the EU's border force is whether it will at any point mean a Conservative government would accept terms within the EU migration policy or a quota of asylum seekers coming here from the EU. Is that, is that ruled out unequivocally? Uh, com uh, completely. That's, that's Labour Party policy. It's, Labour Party... it's not their policy. Well, we'll, we'll speak to Yvette Cooper later, but the so, Conservative policy? So the Conservative policy is to stop the boats. And I've always made it clear that the work that we do with in our uh, own borders, in terms of um, seizures, in terms of raids on illegal working, in terms of returning people to their country of origin, and the Rwanda scheme, that's incredibly important. But ultimately, we want to stop people being smuggled here in the first place. And the best place to do that actually is further back through that supply chain of human suffering. So, uh, in continental Europe, the borders of continental Europe. And we recognise that, that Europe has got to deal with its own uh, illegal uh, uh, migration problems on its southern border, on the eastern border. So, we want to help them secure their external border, because in doing so, it will help us secure our borders. I mean, I guess you must be hoping that these new policies of collaboration would work well enough that a plane won't even have to take off to go to Rwanda. Well, the Rwanda is an incredibly important part of the deterrent, as are the returns agreements that we have, the illegal working raids and that kind of stuff. And the whole point of deterrent, of course, is that you ultimately don't want to have to use it. Now, the simple truth is that that won't be uh, immediate. We are going to send people to Rwanda. We need to demonstrate to the people smugglers and the people who have put themselves into the hands of people smugglers that if they come to the UK illegally, they will not be able to stay here. They'll either be returned to their country of origin, and we do that a lot, and that is having an effect, or if we can't return to their country of origin for whatever reason, they will be removed to Rwanda. But the message we're sending is, don't try to come to the UK illegally, because if you do, you won't be able to stay. Let's uh, talk about the, this week's developments, and uh, in Parliament particularly. Do, do you sure. personally have confidence in the Speaker? Well, uh, uh, I think the Speaker's done a, a fantastic job. I think he's been a breath of fresh air compared with uh, his predecessor. He made a mistake. He's apologised for the mistake. My view is that I'm supportive of him, but ultimately... Is the, the, so the, the government is as well? Oh, no, well, this is the point I'm going to make. This point I'm going to make. The selection of the Speaker is House business for the House of Parliament rather than for government. And I know that sounds like we're dancing on the head of the pin, but it, in our constitution, it's a very important division. So this is a house business for members of parliament rather than for government ministers. And your personal view, though, is that, that, that you back him. So that, that was interesting. I mean, it's interesting that he clearly felt MP safety was so in question uh, that, that he felt strong enough to change the procedures of the house. Whether that was a mistake uh, for him to be influenced in that way or not, as Home Secretary, do you look at that and think we must boost MPs' security immediately to stop this even being a discussion point? So we, we have been very conscious, long before the events of this week, we've been very conscious that there has been increased pressure on, uh, on members of Parliament. There have been people who have been targeted. My good friend and colleague Tobias Elwood's private home in Dorset had protesters outside it. So we have already got a Defending Democracy Task Force. It's chaired by my friend and colleague, 
uh, uh, Tom Tugendhat. Uh, he wrote to chief constables last week outlining the powers that they've got and the powers that we expect them to use to keep uh, elected people safe, because democracy does need to be defended, uh, defended robustly. That is our job, and we will do that. The only thing that MPs should fear is the ballot box. The, that's really important, and we're absolutely focused on that. But, but presumably this week uh, was an example that those measures that you're either considering or have already put in place aren't enough. Well, uh, I, I, I think we have got to be constantly vigilant. And, of course, if people come to me and say they are worried or if they uh, go to their uh, party and say that they are worried, we will listen to that and we will continue to take action. We've already taken robust action. We will continue to do so. Um, I, I, I've not had any specific threats brought to me, um, but we will stay constantly uh, vigilant. But the point I would make is, ultimately, Members of Parliament and, indeed, elected officials through all layers of government have got to act without fear or favour. Uh, they, they need to be defended, and we're absolutely determined to do that. Did that happen this week? Well, as I say, I've had no, no, no specific but I mean, things brought to me. Without fear or favour? I mean, was the Speaker... He clearly had the right intentions, but was it, was it too timid? So, though, I, I, I'm, I'm not... We should not be changing our procedures in response to threats or intimidation. That would indicate that the threats and the intimidation uh, is working. That's the opposite of the message that we want to send. If people think that they can target members of parliament, they are wrong. The full force of the law will be brought down. And, uh, as I say, my, uh, my department has written to chief constables setting out the powers that they already have got and that they should use to keep parliamentarians safe, not just in Westminster, but around the whole country. People should vote with their conscience, not through fear. Um, let's touch on the post office. Um, it, clearly, the CEO of the post office felt that some sub-postmasters who'd been convicted were indeed guilty uh, and uh, sent a letter accordingly in, in early January before the government announced their plans on what to do about this. Is it OK for the CEO of the post office, if that is a genuinely held view, to express that opinion um, when he knows what was going on, how the government was thinking? Is that helpful to the government or, or is it impossible for him to continue in his position with such a, a differing view? Well, uh, the, uh, the Secretary of State has made, uh, has made clear, and indeed the Prime Minister has made clear, that what happened to the sub-postmasters, sub-postmistresses through this Horizon scandal is unacceptable. We've worked quickly and we continue to work quickly to make sure compensation gets to those people who have been really very... Uh, their lives have been blighted because of this system and we are going to go further to make sure that we can strip those convictions of the people who have been unfairly convicted. Uh, the, uh, the, yeah, that letter is not going to divert us from what we know to be the right course of, a course of action, which is to do the right thing by hard-working people who found themselves, through no fault of their own, being targeted for uh, criminal action. So we are relentlessly focused on that, and, and that exchange won't change that at all. And, and, and in principle, it is OK for the CEO uh, of the post office to have that view, and he should express the view he holds, well, provided it's backed up well, with evidence. Look, the uh, information that's exchanged in letters uh, has a function. But the point that I want to make is that we are not going to be distracted or deterred from doing the right thing to uh, provide the compensation and do so quickly for those uh, sub-postmasters, sub-postmistresses, who, as I say, through absolutely no fault of their own, found themselves being hounded by the law. I um, just wanted to end, if I may, Home Secretary, again, on, on the topic of MPs' safety. There was a, a suggestion of exclusion zones uh, about protests uh, around MPs' offices and homes. Is that an infringement on free speech uh, and the right to protest, or is that a, a sensible middle ground step? Well, Lord Walney, uh, who has himself been a, a member of Parliament uh, and now advises the government uh, on these issues, has put forward a report, which I've not had a chance to read in detail. But the headlines, I think, are important. And, and there is, uh, there is a, a requirement to protect freedom of speech, 
and that is very, very well protected in the United Kingdom. But there is also an absolute requirement to make sure that we defend democracy, that people who make decisions in government at whatever level are, are, are doing so based on their judgment, based on the information, based on their beliefs, not based on fear of reprisals. They absolutely must and will be protected uh, from that. Home Secretary, thanks so much for stopping by uh, to the Sky News Breakfast this morning. Uh,